Good evening. This side, Rahul Magan here as a Group Chief Executive Officer, Trishy Consulting. But today, I am not talking about as a hedge fund manager. Rather, I am talking about as a law student. From the very first day of the law as a student, I am very clear on one thing in which areas I am going to practice. And one of the areas in which I am going to practice is definitely the income tax. Now, when I say income tax, I mean to say international taxation read with DTAA, nothing but double taxation avoidance agreement. Of course, the journey is long. I spoke with many people and they clearly said that it would be taking at least a year to reach to that destination. Considering my speed, my commitments, my busy schedule and all. And I would definitely try very hard to reach this destination before one year. And I have already started my journey in the income tax. Being a law student, every day I read the books. I read the books of Supreme Court, I read the books of High Court, I read the books of Contempt of Court, many books I read. I read very expensive books which are available in the market. God is really very kind. More importantly, I print the judgments of Supreme Court and High Court from the internet. And I'm really thankful that Honorable Supreme Court provides their judgment every, almost every day on their website. Delhi High Courts do provide on their website. And other judgments and citations and remarks are also available on the various law websites we have in and outside India. Now, when I'm reading the income tax, I am linking three things. Number one, the judgments of Honorable Supreme Court, Honorable High Court, not to mention ITAT, which is Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. And also the linking this with the Constitution, what our Constitution is saying, like 141, 142, 145 and various other factors. And more importantly, linking this with the financial world. Being a corporate treasurer and a hedge fund manager, it is relatively very easy for me to link this with the financial world. And today is my first video as far as the income tax is concerned. And in this video, I am talking about a topic which is really a concern for me. But before I reach to the income tax, the part, let me show you the book which I'm referring. This is the Mr. Uh, Dr. Vinod K. Singhania book, which I'm using. Currently that I bought it from Amazon. More books I'm going to be buying from Amazon very soon as the time would progress. You know, guys, in India, we have many startups. and Majority of these startups are loss-making startups. Almost every day you have the information that this startup, you know, uh, uh, reporting losses, this startup reporting losses. Rather, today, without quoting any specific name, I've been through two edtech startups of India. And you would be very surprised to know that both Actex startups reported huge losses and the income is marginal. Huge losses and income is marginal in nature. And now the trend has come when the Indian startups have started raising the debt. The trend has come. The reason being the original equity venture capitalist funding is almost zero. And this is a fact. That's a separate thing that our media is not highlighting this fact, but how long? We all know that how long because at the end of the day, the reality has to come. Example, in 2018, when I first spoke about the Credit Suisse, 
then majority of the people disagreed with that. Rather, many passed comment on that. But today, five years from this prediction, which I made in 2018, Credit Suisse is more or less collapsed. Now it is official that UBS is buying Credit Suisse paying near about 3 billion US dollars. And Credit Suisse is having thousands of jobs in India. Now God is the only saver how these jobs would be retained. Anyways, this is a separate thing which I would be talking in my next video. When these startups do business, you know the only thing they are chasing is the top line. Now that top line means, let me give you my favorite example as Ram Lal Samosa and Company. I further repeat, in case that company turn out to be a real company, that is a coincidence because I am taking the example that which makes sure that, you know, uh, this not end up being a real company. So what is happening that Ram Lal Samosa and Company is getting a money from a venture capitalist firm and they are quite aware that the cost of making samosa is around 5 rupees and they are selling this samosa in 2 rupees which means on every samosa they are losing 3 rupees. Of course common sense all those who wanted samosa and they are getting at 2 rupees irrespective you know they knowing that the cost in the market is 5 rupees in this eventuality they would definitely go and buy this samosa. Slowly, slowly, top line moves up while the bottom line, which is in our parlance known as PAT, known as profit after tax, would came down. Now what happened? Quite simple, not to mention. Ramla Samosa and Company increased their shops across India and slowly it becomes a unicorn on paper, but company is a loss-making company. In 2021 onwards, when the venture capitalist money started drying, then what happened? This company started raising the debt. Today also, I have saw that one startup in India raised 100 million debt. Guys, 100 million debt. If I go with the exchange rate of today, then that 100 million is approximately 840 crores approximately 840 crores. The interest rate the banks are giving to the term deposit holders is approximately between 8 to 8.5 percent. It means the funding which this startup has taken definitely having an interest rate of more than 8 to 8.5 percent. But simplistically speaking, let's assume it is 9 percent. Although I myself is saying that 9% is a wrong figure, but still simplistically take it 9%. 840 crores and 9% interest rate, it means you end up paying not less than 72 crores as an interest. 72 crores as an interest. The bottom line of that startup is already red. It means that on a red bottom line, now technically speaking, the red bottom line means that you are in losses. Please take a note of that. Now on a red bottom line, if you are taking a debt, that it means you are losing more money. It means that you are losing more money. Now in this eventuality, in this eventuality, the debt which they are taking from whatever venture capitalist or private equity or a venture debt firm, that debt is supposed to have a taxation benefit. Now, what the hell is the taxation benefit? Here comes my first video on the income tax. I go with the book. Like I said, I'm reading this book and uh, I would have more videos. I go with section 36. That's more important. Section 36. And according to section 36, subsection 1, point number 3. I repeat, section 36, subsection 1, point 3. Interest on borrowed capital. There are three conditions in that, which being laid down by the income tax. Number one, the assessee must have borrowed money. Number one. 
Number two, the money so borrowed must have been used for the purpose of business. Condition number three, the interest is paid or payable on such borrowings. Number one, I would like to have my interpretation issue on this piece. Need to borrow. It is not for the income tax department to examine whether there was no need to borrow money because the assessee had ample of funds of its own. Number two, section 3613 doesn't make any distinction between interest paid on the capital utilized in acquiring capital asset or revenue asset. My simple submission here is that if any profitable company in India is taking money, example Reliance, Reliance is a profitable company. They have a reserves of $100 billion. More importantly, every event, every business they are up to, it is profitable in nature. And this is really a very congratulating factor for Reliance. Now, if the companies like Reliance who are 100% profitable in nature, if they are borrowing the money and they are charging, they are deducting basically the interest which they are paying on the money, whether this is ECB, external commercial borrowing, whether this is SOFR, secured overnight financing rate, or whether this is ESTR, Euro short term rate, whether this is Sonia, Sterling overnight index average or any other index, right? or probably they are taking from India, then I understand that the interest which they are paying to the lender is should be chargeable. It should be considered as chargeable. But can we use the same logic about a startup who is in losses? Because majority of the startups are like Ram Lal Samosewala. The cost of the samosa is 5 rupees while they are selling at 2 rupees and every year they are incurring losses. In this eventuality, would it be wise if income tax department, the assessment officer is allowing a deduction of a huge amount because the startup without quoting the name who borrowed $100 million, which means around uh, 840 crores and assuming 9%, which means around 72 crores as are assuming. Can this 72 crores be allowed as a deduction from the PAT knowing that the PAT is in losses? This is the first interpretation issue which I am raising before the before my subscribers on YouTube. God is kind. I am I have started reading the income tax and probably in a three to four months I would be having a lot of videos on the income tax. But my personal interpretation issue is if the business is profitable, be it any business, FMCG, cement, textile, uh, oil and gas, petrochemical, gases, LNG, CNG, be it any business. If that business is profitable, the deduction is supposed to be given because the money which is being charged, which is being taken is for the benefit of the business. But if since inception, that company, specifically speaking, the startup is in losses, in this eventuality, the deductions should not be allowed because we all know that in many eventualities, these startups are on sale, rather wind down. We have seen very recently without quoting any specific name, many startups closed in India. Many startups closed and at the end of the day, thousands of jobs being cut. So my interpretation issue is that the assessment officer should not allow the deduction on interest on borrowed capital for a startup who is in losses since inception. This is Raul Bagan from Tracy Consulting Group. You knew my personal number, plus 91 9899922478. Plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. Thank you and have a great time ahead.